Just like parts, assemblies can also have configurations. They can be created through a design table or created manually. While part configurations tend to focus on dimensions or features, assembly configurations tend to focus on components, mates, or assembly features. They can be used to represent different versions of a model or a powerful way to increase performance, especially on larger assemblies. So in this lesson, we are going to take a look at using configurations within an assembly. We are going to create a second version of this assembly, replacing the one piece crank arm with a three piece sub assembly. You can download the lesson example files from the link in the description of this video. You will need SOLIDWORKS 2020 or newer to open and use these files. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel to show your support, and let's begin the lesson. Once you have downloaded and extracted the lesson example files, open the CH03L05 assembly file, which is the main assembly file and should look like this, which you see on screen now. The main thing we're trying to accomplish is to replace this one piece crank arm with a three piece sub assembly crank arm by using configurations within the assembly. To access the configurations, look over on the side panel here. If you need more space, you can just drag it out and you want to click on the configuration manager. In the configuration manager, you should see our only configuration currently is the default configuration. I want to first point out a couple of options and settings within this default configuration. You can access the properties for the configuration by right clicking on the default configuration and going to properties. Here you can see some menu items such as changing the configuration name, adding a description, uh, using in bill of materials, etc. But what we're interested in is the advanced options down the bottom. These options here tell SOLIDWORKS how to handle any new features, mates, or new components that are added when you are working with other configurations. This checkbox will suppress new features and mates in this configuration when they are being added to other configurations. Likewise, with the suppress new components options, any components we add while working in other configurations will be suppressed in this configuration. To demonstrate the effect of these options, let's check the suppress new features mates checkbox, but leave the suppress new components checkbox cleared. So we should have a tick in the top one, but these other two or other three are unticked. Exit the property manager by clicking on the green check mark at the top to select OK. Our next step is to add a new configuration, which is going to be adding in the three piece sub assembly and then constraining it in place using mates. We can add a new configuration by right clicking on the top menu part here and then going to add configuration. You'll see the menu pane pop up and in here you can also see our advanced options, but we're not going to worry about that. What we're interested in is giving it first a name. So we're going to call it version two because this is going to be our second configuration. You can add a description if you want some more detail, but in this case, we can just leave the rest, the rest blank. Click OK to accept. And you should see we now have two configurations, our version two and our original default configuration. You can see which configuration is the active one as it will be uh, kind of highlighted or normal looking, but any other configurations will be grayed out. You can only have one configuration obviously activated at one time and you can switch between configurations by simply double clicking on one of the other configurations. So if you had multiple configurations, you can double click on them and move between them. Uh, in this case, we just have the two, so we can swap between them by just double clicking on them. So to continue on, make sure you double click on version two to make that active. You should see it is active, the, re the default will be grayed out. So in our version two configuration, we want this single arm crank piece to be suppressed, and then we want to add in the three piece. So to suppress this crank arm, we can just click on it. So the menu pops up and go to suppress. Again, to demonstrate the difference in configurations as this is now suppressed in version two, if we were to switch to default, you can see that the single piece crank arm is is activated in this. So it's not deleting it in any way, it's just suppressing it so it's hidden from our version two. So go back to version two, make sure that is active and we'll continue on. And we are now going to add our three piece sub assembly. So go to insert components, you should see a menu pop up and browse to the location where you extracted the lesson files. You're looking for the three piece assembly and insert that and just drop it anywhere you like and the menu should clear once you do that. We will need to lock this in position as currently this sub assembly is free to move around. We can do that by using mates. So we just need to add three mates so we can constrain this three-piece crank arm to the main assembly here. The first mate I'm going to create 
is the concentric mate. So we're going to select this. And instead of rotating under, you can actually just right click on this and go to select other. By moving around, we can select the internal concentric edge we need. So that's just a quick way instead of having to rotate and click underneath like that. Uh, we need this to move out of the way a bit so we can move this up. Next mate we want is this face and this face. And the final one is this face and this face. Click OK. So you should have added three mates. And you can test this by simply moving it around and it should all function correctly now and it should have moved the crank arm out of position. With all the mates required being added, let me show you a way of selecting configurations directly. What I mean is that this subassembly was made using components that also have more than one configuration. Because we have multiple configurations at the component level, we may want to specify which components to use in our version 2 assembly configuration. To do this, we click on the crank knob, let the contextual menu pop up, and you should see a little drop down menu here as this component has multiple configurations already applied. So we can drop that menu down and click on the slotted knob. And next to this, you also have another drop down menu, which allows you to select where this configuration is going to be specified. So you can click this configuration, all configurations, or specify configurations. In this case, we just want to be applying it to the version 2, so we're going to say this configuration, and then click on the green check mark. And you can see our slotted knob is now part of our version 2 configuration. So keep in mind that this drop-down menu only appears because this subassembly has configurations inside it. And more specifically, that component has multiple configurations. If you click on it again, you'll see that this has the drop-down menu. But if you click on another part of the assembly, say the crank arm here, it doesn't have that drop down menu because it's only the handle knob that has the multiple configurations. Another way of selecting configurations of our sub assembly within our main assembly is to go back to our feature manager tree, find the three piece assembly and click on it. And you can see that the drop down menu is also here. So we can make our configuration adjustments here. Uh, you can also click on the component and that will also show uh, if you were to click on one of the other components as they don't have multiple configurations set up you wouldn't see anything. So that's another way you can control the configurations of sub-assemblies as well. So let's go back to our configuration manager and switch to our default configuration by double clicking on it. And straight away you'll notice we have an issue where our one piece crank arm is showing as well as the three piece crank arm. If you recall when we looked at the properties for the default configuration, we left the suppress new components option cleared. This has resulted in the components we added in the version 2 configuration being unsuppressed in the default configuration. However, we did check the box to suppress new features and mates. If we go back to our feature manager tree and then go down to the bottom and expand the mates subcategory, you can see that our three mates that we created to constrain this three piece sub assembly are suppressed in our default configuration due to those advanced property options that we selected. If we click and hold on our three piece sub assembly, we can drag it around. And this is because those three mates are suppressed in our default configuration. So you can see the settings are important to consider when you create assembly configurations. So you control how new features, mates, and components are handled in each configuration. To finish off this lesson, let's make it so the default configuration only contains this one piece handle. We can do that by simply suppressing our three piece sub assembly. So by clicking on our three piece sub assembly or even doing it in the feature manager tree itself, going to suppress, you can now see that is suppressed in our default configuration and only our single crank arm is showing. If we go back to our configuration manager and switch back to our version 2 configuration, we can see that it contains our three piece sub assembly. And if we go to our default, it's only going to contain our single arm configuration. The final thing we might want to do is rename the default to version 1 so it keeps it in better order. So we can do that by right clicking on it and going to rename tree item and then we'll just give it a name of version 1. Another way you can rename is either by having it highlighted and clicking F2 or just slow double clicking on it. So as you can see assembly configurations can be a very powerful way of creating 
your models. It allows you to create multiple configurations within the one model, and this can potentially save you time or performance, especially in larger models. But when you have a model that is so similar like we have in this design, and you have one part that may be changing through different stages, it may be more beneficial to create configurations showing these changes and just suppressing the parts that you don't need through the different configurations. This way you don't have to have multiple models or assemblies showing each different configuration. And then you'd have your your one main assembly with all your different configurations. You can have many, many different types of configurations set up and simply click between them to make those changes to show to your employer or clients or whatever it is. I also demonstrated that you can control configurations of sub-assemblies within your main assembly. So this way you could have smaller sub-assembly in that main assembly that has those multiple levels of configurations as well, which is then controlled in your main assembly. So that brings us to the end of the lesson. I hope you have learned something new and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel to show your support.